In this video, we're going to learn how to calculate work working in one dimension but with variable forces. I've added the essence of work, which is that it adds or removes energy from a system when forces act on an object that is moving. So consider that you now have a force, but it varies in time, and you know the velocity of an object. The work, then, is the integral between some initial and final time of the product of the force and the velocity. Remember that both force and velocity are vectors. So in one dimension, we're using our one-dimensional vector notation, where the number is the magnitude of the force and the sign indicates the direction. To be honest, this isn't the most useful relationship. It doesn't come up most of the time. It's not even the most fundamental, but I think it does highlight the relationship between all of these quantities. And if you do have your functions as a function of time, then it gives you an easy way to solve those problems. So let's look at it in action. I have an injector mechanism that shoots cargo out of a space station in two seconds. It has a time varying force of 100 times t, and there are other forces on this object. We know that the velocity during these two seconds of the object as it leads is 8t squared. What is the work that the mechanism does on the cargo? First, I'm going to draw a picture. Here's my exit chute. I have my cargo that's going out. I have positive x towards outside the spaceship. To calculate the work, I can just plug those functions into my integral. The work goes from 0 to 2, force times velocity integrated over time. Calculating those together, 800 t cubed. The indefinite integral is 800 t to the fourth over 4, or 200 t to the fourth, evaluated at 2 and 0, which is then 3200 joules. So if we know those functions, we can go ahead and calculate this directly. However, let's look at the special case where the force varies as a function of position, but not time. I have another exit chute for cargo in a spaceship, but in this case, my force is known to vary over length, 40x, and this acts over the 5 meters of the exit chute for the spacecraft. Well, the first thing, I'm going to set up a coordinate system. I'm going to set my origin at where the object starts, and then the force ends at x is equal to 5 meters, and I'll have positive in that same direction. So now we have this force, which is a function of position, times velocity. Now the relationship between velocity and position is that the velocity is the derivative of the position. As long as these functions are continuously differentiable, then I can write a relationship between the differentials, dx is equal to v times dt. Now I can just do substitution and replace v times dt with dx, and now I have an integral over position. The work is now just the integral of the spatially varying force between some initial and final position. If we go back to our problem, that gives me work between 0 and 5, the initial final position of 40x. Here's the function integrated over x. Again, a simple polynomial. The indefinite integral is 40x squared over 2. 20x squared evaluated between 5 and 0, which gives me energy added to the system of 500 joules. So you can use either of these expressions to find work of a varying force in one dimension.